Thank you, Lord. Wow, God is amazing. I feel his presence so much right now. Come on, if you came to church today, if you logged on not wanting just another church experience, but wanting more of the power of God in your life, more of his presence, come on, can you lift your hands right now? Come on, lift your hands right now. Lord Jesus, come. We want more of your presence. Come on, if you're hungry, once you cry out, lift up your voice right now. Let's lift our voices all around. Everywhere you're coming from in your home, fill it with praise. Hallelujah, Lord. We want more of you. We want more of your spirit. God, I just pray right now for the change family. I pray for everybody tuning in right now, God, that through the screen, they would feel the presence and the power of God. Come on, receive it right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We want more. God, right now, today, we are believing for an outpouring of your spirit like never before, God, something we've never seen or experienced. No, no generation before has experienced. This is a fresh outpouring. You said the glory of this house will be greater than the glory of the former house. So, Lord, we want it. We want it all. Come on, if you're desperate, come on, call out to him right now. Say, God, I want more. Come on, say it. Say, I want more. Hallelujah. We want more of you, Jesus. More of you, Holy Spirit. Come and rest in this place that the word of God met with your presence creates a miracle, that your word creates a breakthrough, that your word creates something in us that makes us move in faith, that move in power. Hallelujah. You are awakening a generation. Come on, if you're ready to be awake, say, Lord, wake me up. Lord, wake me up right now. Wake up my spirit. Stir a fire in me. Stir a fire in me. Ignite me, Lord God. Oh, ignite me, Lord God. I pray for what happened in the church of Acts when you came with a fresh wind in that place. Hallelujah. I pour out your spirit on us, God. We, are, we mean business today. Come on, if you mean business, say, God, I need more. I need more of you. I want more of you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every house, light it up right now. Every heart, light it up right now. Hallelujah, God. You are an awesome, mighty God. We are nothing without you, Lord. That's why before we even get into this thing, God, we need your presence. Hallelujah. I feel you right now, Holy Spirit. I feel you, Holy Spirit. You are in this place. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Lord God, just bless this word. I pray that it would get in us. It would get in us so much and transform us and just change us to the people you want us to be, that it would raise up an army of those that have fire in their eyes, those that are walking with a new boldness and courageousness to violently advance the kingdom of heaven, to forcefully push forward your mission, that we carry the heart of the king. Right now, God, raise up a church, a pure, spotless church that will carry your mission. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for what you spoke over this city. We thank you that this is the greatest hour to be alive. We thank you for the miracles that are going to take place out of those who are raising up right now, that are rising to the call on their life. We thank you, God, for the lives that are going to know you because of their word, their testimony, their gospel that they're spreading. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for them boldly proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, right now. We thank you in advance for the lives that are going to be transformed this week as your word gets in us and transforms us and makes us come alive to our purpose to bring your kingdom down. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray all of this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're ready to get into God's word, man, would you shout at me? Just put something in the comments. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hey, we are so grateful that you spend your Sunday here with us. Man, I'm, I feel God's presence. I want to dive right into the Word. I'm coming to you from an incredible miracle. We're in Warehouse on Watts, right off Gerard Street in Watts. Man, this is an epic space. You have to know the miracle that I'm standing in. Whew. God is so good. Oh, man, I could just, I could just cry right now in His presence. It's, he's so good. How He's worked all things together for our good, all things together for his purpose to proclaim who he is in our city. Hey, before we even jump in, I want you to hear a voice memo that I actually sent to one of our staff before we knew of this space, before this all came about. I'll tell you the rest of the story, but first you have to hear this voice memo of what God was placing in our spirit before we came here. Yo, bro, I know you're at work, <clears throat> but I just had to 
put this down so that uh, we can pray over it and that you can start thinking this way. Um, in our prayer time, God just spoke over the places of huge gatherings that they are going to be used for revival and that God is going to set a generation on fire. It's going to start with men and uh, be released over the next generation, this generation of creatives and artists and um, man. So we have to make this happen, bro. And I don't know what that looks like, but I think we need a warehouse and I think we need to gather um, some musicians who know how to bring down the presence of the Father. And we need to just have a night where God lights a generation on fire, where we just go after his presence. We go after him in intense prayer. Um, we just have a place of total surrender, hearts ablaze, and just let the spirit move. Man, we need a spirit's outpouring. Is there a warehouse that we can go where we can gather a bunch of people and then just go after his presence in a desperation? We'll just worship the Lord in spirit and truth. We'll just bring down his presence and we'll just go after him. We'll create a hunger and a thirst for his righteousness. And we'll just gather those who are hungry, you know? We'll go after it and we'll let the fire of God do the rest. We'll let the Holy Spirit come down and rock people. It'll be a place of healing signs and wonders that that revival would start. We need to start somewhere and I think that's, that's where we're going to start. So anyways, think about that, all right? Love you. Bye. So I recorded that voice memo and then five days later, Five days later, we got an email saying this space was available. We're looking for someone to rent it and be a part. Come on, somebody. God is good. He wants his purposes fulfilled and he will do anything to resource and bring his kingdom down to earth. Come on, he's looking for those who are obedient. He's looking for those who are willing. He said in Isaiah, he said, who will go for me? Who will go for me? And the prophet said, I will send me. And that is our heart cry as a church, as a change family. We are saying, hey, listen, as a community, God, we say, yes, we will go. Send us, send us. And God is resourcing us. So I'm standing in the middle of a miracle today. Come on, somebody. Aren't you so thrilled that God is caring all about the details? And he is the one who resources his plans. Some of you need to hear that because he won't just call you. He will confirm it and he'll cancel the cost. He will pay for it. God is so good, so good. Today, I wanna to continue in our series, uh, coming to you from Warehouse on Watts. I wanna continue our series, Committed, Committed. We've been talking about the commitment to Christ. What does it look like to be full on, to be all in, to be committed for life? See, this commitment to Christ is not a commitment that's a 30-day trial. Come on, somebody. You put your credit card on, but you can have 30 days to cancel and get out if it don't feel right. This isn't one of those commitments. This isn't one of those feelings that we come into a church and we feel it until, you know, the message doesn't rub me right or the worship's not my taste or all these things that us as the Western church, we get caught up in. And we church hop and church go around and look for places until we end up just nowhere. Man, I'm telling you, this is a commitment that God is calling his children to. A commitment to say, I'm in. I'm in this thing. I'm in this thing. Committed. Committed. Today, I want to talk about the commitment to the call. Commitment to the call. You have a call on your life. I don't know if you know that. You might have been living this entire time not knowing that you actually have a specific purpose and reason for living. You have a command on your life, a mandate on your life, and maybe you've been pushing the snooze button on it. Maybe you've been running away from the call of God. You've been running away from, from those that have invited you into this space of knowing the King, coming alive to your purpose. Today, I want to talk about that commitment to the call because it's time to answer the call. Come on, somebody. Put in the comments, say, it's time to answer that call. Don't push in, don't screen, you know, don't look at the, the, the person who's calling and say, oh, I'll call them back. No, 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 it's time to jump in and answer the call of God on your life. Let's break in today. I want to talk through uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 20. Now this is the Great Commission. We see Jesus died on the cross. He had been talking about it with his disciples, but it finally came to be where he died on the cross and they thought it was over. And then he rose from the dead on the third day and he appeared to his disciples. 
And this was the final time where he was with his disciples before he was taken up to heaven. This was the great commission he placed on his church. Now, when we talk about coming alive to our purpose, this is what we're talking about. When we say that as a church, we're like, we're coming alive to our purpose so that others can find theirs. We are saying we are coming alive to the commission of God on our life. You're coming alive to the purpose of why you're here. That is what change is all about. And this, this scripture really defines out what our mission is on earth. So Jesus, talking to his disciples, he gave them the greatest mission they could ever live for. If you want to know the greatest purpose that you can live your life for, get ready. This is it. Jesus lays it out plain and simple. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Woo! Gets me pumped up. He goes on. He says, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Come on, somebody. If that doesn't get you amped up, I don't know what will. Holy Spirit, hallelujah. This word is so good today. I want, to, I want to tell you about the greatest purpose and the greatest call that God has on us. You see, some of us, as Christ followers, we're, we're going through this Christian walk and we've been taught or we grew up in the church or we've been a part of a group that is just riding the ride of life and waiting for Jesus to come back. We're sitting, we're waiting, we're going through the motions of life. And when life hits, when this pandemic hits, you know, for a lot of us, it's been a, a, a pausing time where it's paused a lot of your movement in God. And I'm telling you today that we are not pushing pause as a church. We are not sitting on the sidelines and cheering on others to save our city. This is our city. This is our community. And God has a great call on our lives to change this city, to transform this city, to make it the standard of what it looks like for kingdom to be on earth. Come on, somebody. We are called. You are called. He said, go. <laughs> Jesus says, go. Preach the good news. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel that I love the world. I love all. John 3, 16 says, God for, So God loved the world with all his heart that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is God's heart. He says, go and preach it. Tell everyone, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that God loves you? It's the Great Commission. And I love this, this scripture because not only does he proclaim it over the disciples, but then we see the promise that comes with it. He says, these signs, everybody say these signs. These signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues, pick up snakes with their hands. They will drink deadly poison. It will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. I love these promises because they follow the obedience to the call. And maybe some of you are like, I don't know if I can step out. I don't know if I can, can go anywhere because I just, I've never seen God move like that. I don't know if he can use me like that. Can I tell you today, God has promises that are following those who will step out in faith, those who will step out and answer the call. Man, do you want your prayer life to increase? Maybe you say, man, my prayer life is boring. I don't, I don't even know what to pray for. And I get before God, I'm like, mm, uh, you know, bless me, you know, touch my day. Uh, protect me. You know, we pray all these, these prayers and maybe you're there. You just, 
and you want your prayer life to increase, step out in faith. Step somewhere where you need Holy Spirit to come. I promise you, your prayer life will increase. I promise you, you will be praying differently when you step out boldly in Jesus' name. When you start to step out and you pray for, for healing and there's nothing in your power that can get it done. It's only by Holy Spirit showing up. I promise you, your prayers are going to transform. Your prayers are going to move into a space of desperation saying, God, it is not me. It is not me. I have nothing but Holy Spirit on me. These signs will follow. And he says, these signs will follow all who believe. Come on, somebody. There's some of you that are not walking in the truth of the power of God on your life. I think right now we are seeing the outcome. We're seeing the outcome of a church that is illiterate to the power they carry. Right now in this pandemic, we are seeing that you know, there, there are a lot of churches and Christians, and we've even talked with our partners that we serve with. There are a lot of churches that have backed down from serving, backed down from volunteering, backed down from really hitting this city for Jesus Christ, going after it. What? Where's the church? Where's the church? This is not a time to sit on the sidelines. This is the greatest hour to be alive. This is the greatest hour to walk with the power of God. There's so much fear trying to grip everybody. I mean, everybody is caught in this chaos of fear. And God is raising up a church, a glorious church that is locked eyes with him, that has the power of Christ in them, that is walking boldly and proclaiming the good news, proclaiming the gospel, and who works in the power, the signs that follow them, that they are walking with an authority that where they go, everything must bow to the spiritual authority on them. This is a time where God is raising up a church of people, of an army that believe, that have the power of God in them and that are answering the call. What is the call on your life? Man, my mind goes back to the time that God called us to this city and we came into this city totally foreigners. I mean, we were newbies to every part of the city, every neighborhood. We'd have no idea where things were, or where we were in the city. And God brought around us people, not just people, but a family. Can I tell you, I could just cry thinking about those of you who jumped on board and said, you know what? We're going to do this together. But God has an amazing call on every one of you. And I, I think about this family. I think about this church family and who is involved in it. And those of you who have just stepped in, maybe even during this pandemic, during this online season, where you've stepped into this family to make it your home. And I, I, I believe that with all my heart, that God is raising up a generation of those who will not back down. Where he talks about in the word, he says, I have not given you a spirit of timidity or fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. This is the church he's talking about. He's raising up an army, a church, the change makers, those that are answering and committing to the call. You know, sometimes we treat Christianity like it's this virtual reality game. And when we go to church, we put on the goggles, faith. Oh, we have faith to move mountains. Oh, God is going to do a miracle. Yes, God, save our city. Transform our city. Do all these great things. When we go into our prayer closet, we put on the goggles. Oh, God is so good. He's an awesome God. He's calling us to do great and mighty things for him. And then as soon as we leave the prayer closet, as soon as we leave the church service or experience, as soon as we tune out, we take off the goggles and go back into our real world. This is our job. This is our life. This is our family. This is Monday through Saturday. Then Sundays, or maybe even some midweek times, we'll get on and we'll pray. We'll go into our God time, and this is our God time. But that's separate from the God, from the reality of life. And some of us, we treat life like this. We treat Christianity like this. And we come in and we don't understand that God has called us Monday through Sunday, every day. He hasn't called a weekend church. He hasn't called you to say, all right, listen, until I get back, I need you guys to gather on Sundays. If you just gather for an hour, okay? And then every day I need you just to spend a little time with me in the morning, just a little time. I don't want all the time, just a little bit of time with me. Just do this until I get back. That's the great commission. No, no, no. <laughs> That's not what he said. He said, I've called you to 
go, to go. And we can no longer treat Christianity like this virtual reality game where it's false reality. And then all of a sudden we come into say, okay, this is real life. I'm, in, I'm now in real life. I'm now at my job. I'm now in my family. No, no, God wants to unveil. He wants to reveal to you the reality of him. I'm telling you, when you put your faith into action, when you activate your faith, eternity becomes your reality. Eternity becomes the thing that you cannot look past. It is stamped on your eyes. It is something that is blocking everything else from being a desire, everything else from being a perspective. All of a sudden you get caught up in spreading the kingdom of God. Are you ready to commit to the call? You see, Jesus, he is coming back. He's coming back for his church soon. And everything that was built for the kingdom of this world will be destroyed. The only thing that will matter is what you did with the gospel. If that doesn't wreck you, man, I'm so wrecked by that. It, it's the thing that consumes my thoughts when I'm driving alone. It's the things that consume my thoughts when I'm lying in bed at night. And sometimes I'm just so overtaken by it. God, what am I doing with this gospel? How am I effectively pushing and forcefully advancing your kingdom? You called us to this city. You called us to this broken city that needs Jesus. Man, as I walk the streets, I see faces and hearts that need Jesus. Every day, everywhere I go, I see people who need Jesus. And it's our job to go. He did not call a church to sit. He called a church to go. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? You see, we're not waiting for this pandemic to be over. We aren't. We're not waiting, you know, for to, we're not waiting to advance the kingdom whenever this thing blows over. That's why we were praying as a church, hey, listen, we need a space because we need to, we need to gather in groups. And whatever that looks like right now, we're going to gather. We're going to pray. We're going to seek God. In fact, on March 9th, you got to mark it down in your calendar because that prayer night, we are going to, in fact, let's not even call it a prayer night. It's an upper room meeting because I believe that God is going to pour out his spirit so thick in this space. God is going to reveal himself so much. His glory is going to be here in such a mighty way that there will be fire on us to overtake and forcefully advance his kingdom here. See, God is not, he's not, uh, releasing a little trickle. Right now, he is not just sprinkling on his church. Oh, they're, they're, they're desperate for, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit. No, those who are seeking him, those that are, are stepping into his river are getting saturated with the power of God, are getting saturated with what he wants to do. He is moving. And we as a church, we are not waiting for this thing to get over. We're not. And if you are waiting, my friend, it's time to get up. It's time to understand the call on your life that God is calling you to go. He's calling you to go, to do something with the word of God. I love it because uh, the Bible says that when they moved, check this out. You gotta, you gotta capture this because this is incredible. In verse 20 says, then the disciples went out. Come on, somebody. It's time for you to take what God spoke over you. See, he said to them, Go, go, preach the word in all things. Here's the signs that will follow you. You're gonna heal the sick. They will get well when you declare, when you proclaim healing. You have the authority to do that. In my name, the power of my word, man, signs will follow you. Demons, they can't stand a chance. If there are any demons that come in your way, you will proclaim and uh, cast them out. They have to flee because the light causes all darkness to flee. He says, this is what happens. And then the disciples answered that call. And that's what I believe is going to happen today for a lot of you. You're hearing the call. You're hearing the call of God on your life. And you are going to move. He says, the disciples went out and preached everywhere. See, our vision as a church is to see an army rise up and to preach the word of God everywhere. Our vision as a, as a change family is to see an army rise up and everywhere they go that it's a lifestyle of proclaiming the gospel. It's a lifestyle of setting people free. It's a lifestyle of seeing miracles happen in everyday life.
that there is, there's no darkness that can stand in the midst of the changed family. That when we walk in, we have spiritual authority. We walk in with light and hope. We spread the love of Christ so richly that this city is affected by this love. That's the vision of this church. But I love what Jesus says because the word of God says, the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them. This is what you have to understand. The Bible says that Jesus, after he had spoken that of his disciples, he went up to the right hand of God. He has all authority, all power, and now he has the Father's ear. And he is proclaiming and declaring things over us, giving us all power and authority, giving us all glory on the earth. And that who is that is who is working with us. Jesus doesn't send you out on your own. That's, what, that's what's so beautiful about the space is this space is incredible, but it's not just this space. It's Holy Spirit that comes with this space. That as we proclaim the good news, as we are appointed to set the captives free, I'm telling you what, there are so many in this area. They're going to be transformed by the power of Christ because change showed up in this space. Because Holy Spirit rocked up on this place. I'm telling you, the glory of God's going to fall in this place like, like we've never seen before. Philadelphia is going to be radically impacted by the revival that's going to break out of this space. I feel it so much. I feel it even today. I'm in here, I'm in here literally preaching to you on the other side of the screen. And I, I'm just telling you this. God is moving. He wants to do something in Philly. He wants to turn it upside down. And God is using this church because we are hungry. We are desperate. We are seeking him. We want more. We are committing to the call. We're saying, God, we hear you. You said, go. We're saying, send us. We're, he said, go and preach it. We're saying, yes, Lord, we will. Come on, we're answering the call. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to do that? I believe that you're going to do that today. I believe there are some of you that are are not okay with sitting on the sidelines anymore. Whew. And he's going to ask us someday, what did you do with the window that I gave you? See, we have, a, we have a window right now of now until he comes back for his church. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for his church. And he will ask you, hey, what did you do with the window? This pandemic is the greatest window of opportunity. I'm telling you, we have the greatest answer to what the world is seeking right now. We have the power of God in us. We have the faith of God in us. We have the hope of God in us. We have the peace of God in us. We have the joy of God in us. It is the answer to what the world is desiring. It's what the world needs. In a world of chaos, in a world of fear, we carry the power of God. What will you say to Jesus when he says, what did you do with the greatest opportunity that I gave you as the church? for the greatest awakening to happen in the city of Philadelphia or wherever you're watching from today, the greatest awakening of the church, what did you do at that window? I mean, what will you say? Oh, Lord, I, I caught up on some Netflix. Lord, I, I really just watched a lot of documentaries. I learned a ton. Lord, I really built myself. I did a lot of self-examination. Really? A year of self-building? I get it. You need to build yourself, but it's time to move now. It's time to step into. You see, there's a time to pray, and then there's a time to move. And if you are stuck in the closet, let me tell you, it's time to come out of the closet. <laughs> Man, Jesus is bringing a church out of the closet. It's time to start praying and then moving. We don't pray just to pray. We don't pray to get locked in our prayer closets and just stay there all day. We pray so we can move. We pray so that God fills us so that we can go and proclaim the good news. We can proclaim freedom for the captives. We are set free so we set others free. We take ground in Jesus' name. And that's what we're going to do in this space. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more sitting. No more sitting. We are not sitting on the sidelines. This is our territory. This is our territory. I want to read for you Ephesians chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. Go ahead and turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. This is Paul writing to the Ephesians. And he's talking about the power of Christ. And this is his prayer. 
over the Ephesians. This is my prayer for you today. Verse 16, he says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit and your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Verse 20 says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. There it is again. His power at work within us. His power, what he told his disciples. He said, go. And then when the disciples went out and preached everywhere, the Lord was with them and working through them. He says this, he says, all the power and authority that has been given to me, come on, now I go with you and I work within you. That's what God wants to do. When you commit to the call, when you say, and this is the position of committing to the call, is just saying, Lord, I will go. You don't need to know all the answers. You don't need to know everything. All you need to know is that Holy Spirit will be with you. You can't do anything without him. You need Holy Spirit. And that's why it's so important that you get saved and that you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that you're filled with the power and the fire of God. Because when that happens, you move in a new authority. You don't move in your own name anymore. You don't move in these thoughts of, oh, I believe or I have faith that. No, no, no. You have authority because you are Christ's kid. You're a co-heir to the throne. You have the same authority that Jesus had. The same power that rose Christ from the dead now lives in you. And when we have that understanding that Christ is with us, Holy Spirit works in us, that power is at work within us, we can't stay still. We can't sit down. We have to move. We have to move. Ashley challenged us on the prayer call. She challenged us with shredding the Bible in 60 days. Shredding the entire Bible in 60 days. Now, I love reading the Word of God. I love it so much. But that's a lot of reading. That was challenging. <laughs> it was super challenging. And you know what? The, the problem with today is there are a lot of us as Christians that are walking around with a literacy to the Word and the power of God that is in us. And we must know and digest the Word of God to know the power that is flowing through our lives. If you don't stand on the truth, if you don't stand on the word of God, then you are trying to work in your own power. That's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. If you're trying to make it through this life and just get by in these little tidbits of scripture and these little, little you know, monologues with God that you're just like talking, these little conversations, I'm telling you, no, God wants you more. You see, God put on our hearts. He wants to start a revival here in Philadelphia. He wants to do something that will shape the nations. He wants to use all creatives, all artists, the next generation of voices, the next generation of prophets. He wants to raise them up out of Philadelphia. And the, man, the enemy is so afraid of the potential of this city. He is so afraid that the Church of Christ will understand their identity Man, because if they understand, if you get this, if you get this word in you, if you understand that the power that you work in is so much greater than any power in this world, when you understand that and grasp that and you come alive to that, there is nothing that can stop the move of God. Nothing, no person, no thing can stop it. And that is what the enemy is so afraid of. And today, we are making a stand. We are committing to the call because we believe that God wants to turn this city upside down. We're gonna see so many people healed. We are gonna see so many people come to know the Lord. It's gonna happen by us activating the faith and answering the call. Hallelujah. We are gonna see one of the greatest outbreaks of the Spirit. 
this church will be on the front lines of what God is doing. We'll be on the front lines of what God is doing. Will you jump in? Will you jump in? Will you jump into what God wants to use you to do? This vision is too great. Too great to sit on the sidelines and cheer. Go change church. Go the few that will go and the few that will stand up. No, no, God is raising up an army. He's raising up you. He's raising you up. You can hear his call. I know you can. God is calling you to rise. Rise, oh warrior, oh child of God. You are called according to his purposes. So it's time to move. It's time to move. Come on, let me show you the space that we're in right now. All right, I gotta show you this place. Look at this. This is a 3,000 square foot warehouse. We are standing in this room. This room is gonna be used for so many opportunities to serve our city and to bring hope. Can you imagine with me this place full of tables and volunteers, packaging meals, packaging things that people need, clothing, socks, and food, all these things that we can serve our city, show them the love of Christ. We can meet natural needs so that we can meet spiritual needs. That's our call. That's the cry of our heart. That's the vision of this church, is to make sure that people know the hope of Christ. Can you imagine that in this place? Come on, it's gonna be so amazing. We have changed kids that are gonna be doing an Easter egg hunt. Come on, I'm bringing kids from all the neighborhoods to come in and have a space to find Jesus. Their families are gonna know Christ because of this space. Isn't that gonna be amazing? They're gonna be able to gather and have little activities for the kids and let them know the truth of who Jesus is so the Holy Spirit can impact them in a huge way. That's what we're gonna see in this place. Take over youth. Come on, a generation of wild ones who are not held back by the, the barriers of, of Christianity or the barriers of what's been placed on them by past generations to remove barriers that maybe people have placed on them or, or hurt them or maybe even the church has hurt them. We're gonna remove those barriers in here. Come on, take over life. They already are coming up with incredible ways to reach the next generation, to have them come into a space of knowing who Christ is. Come on, that's gonna flow in this place. We're gonna set a generation free. They're gonna radically impact their high schools and middle schools in Jesus' name because of this space. Hallelujah. We're gonna be able to do incredible things by sharing the change stories, the life change stories of people who have found Jesus, who've been radically impacted by the love of Christ, who've been radically impacted by what he has done. God is going to use this space in such a mighty way. We're going to have prayer times in here. I'm telling you what, we can no longer call them just prayer nights. They're upper room meetings where we are believing for Holy Spirit to come and rock this place, to light a generation of fire. There are going to be people who can't even walk out this door because the presence of God is going to be so thick in this space. They're gonna be so caught and wrecked by his love, they're not even gonna be able to walk the street. They're gonna need help getting home. They're gonna need designated drivers for those that are rocked by the presence of God. I'm telling you, that's what's gonna happen in this space. This is a place of hope. Are you ready to get involved? Are you ready to commit to the call? Are you ready for God to use you? Because he is saying, go. He's not saying sit. It's not time to wait. It's not time to sit in our prayer closet and just stay here until the pandemic's over. I'm telling you, this is a time to move. God is calling his church to go. Please do not be like my friend here. See, this is where a lot of Christians stay. We're dead. We're faking like we're alive. We got hair on and, and clothes and we show up to church. And look, we even have our, dev our devotional, you know, our journal that we write all our stuff down. Hey, this is my journal, buddy. You stole my journal. And we even have good things in there. I mean, we, we learn a lot at church, we grow. Maybe we even read the word, maybe we even pray. Are you praying? Nah. Yes, he's even praying. But we can't be like this. This is a dead church, this is a dead faith. This is sitting and soaking and just taking it all in for us. It's time to move. God is calling his church to move in the things of God, to flow in the power of Christ. There are so many ways that you can get involved in the season. And it's time to go. It's time to go. So, are you ready? Are you ready to move? Are you ready to get involved with what God wants to use you to do?
I'm so excited to see what God is going to do as he raises this church up. We're going to hit the streets and see people come to know the Lord. It's going to be a lifestyle. When you're at the grocery store, when you're at pumping gas, when you're going through your day, all day long, every conversation you have, there's going to be opportunities the Holy Spirit's going to spark that we are going to move. Hey, we have a ton of doors to walk through to step into this life of purpose, to answer the call of God in your life. And we got belong on Thursday nights. I'm telling you, this this Thursday, we have a group's week all week long, but on Thursday is a belong group where we share the vision, the foundation of Christ and the vision of this church and what God has called us to do as a community. I invite you to step in. If you are not involved yet, man, I, it doesn't even matter if you're in Philadelphia, you might be virtual. God can use you. He can use you in that virtual space to pray and proclaim who Jesus is, to, to lead people to the Lord. God can use you in a mighty way. And if you aren't yet involved, maybe you're just sitting, watching, and being a part of this change family from a distance. Hey, it's time to step into the home. Come on. It's time to get involved. It's time to get your hands dirty. It's time to answer the call to go. It's time to move. I want to encourage you today that if you are not yet in a circle of people who are pushing and driving you to go, get involved. What are you waiting on? Get involved with a change group. Get involved with a circle of people who are on fire for God and moving towards His purposes, going after the promises of God, seeing it fulfilled. I'm telling you, this Tuesday, I can't wait, where our group is hitting the streets. We're going to proclaim the gospel. We're going to lead people to the Lord. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to see healings. We're going to see miracles take place. That's my circle. That's who I'm doing life with in this season. Who are you doing life with? What, what circle is driving you to be the all that God has called you to be? Jump in. Get involved. What are you waiting for? Get involved. This life is a life of adventure. It's the greatest adventure of your entire life. And it's waiting for you to step into. Jesus says, come. He says, follow me. This will be the greatest time. Signs will follow you. I will work with you. I will empower you. This is the greatest hour to be a Christian. It's the greatest hour. And for some of you watching today, you have not yet made Jesus your Lord. This is the greatest commitment you can make in this entire world. It's the greatest commitment you can make with your life is to say yes to Jesus. You see, he's already paid the price for you on the cross. Sin was so great that you can't handle the weight or you can't handle the payment. You can never repay or do enough good to make yourself right and holy and have the ability to go to heaven. You just can't. Jesus came and he paid the ultimate price for you. And today, I'm, I want to invite you into that relationship with Jesus, to know him as Lord, to make him the King and Lord of your life so that you, my friend, can step into the family of God, can have a place in heaven that when Jesus comes back for you, you will be ready. You will know him as Lord. You won't know him as this, just this person that you heard about or this thing that, that everybody talks about. You will know him as your Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you. If you want to make that commitment today, you want to say, Jesus, I want to make you Lord. Would you pray with me? Pray this prayer. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe that you are risen from the dead and that you're coming back again for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen. Come on, somebody give it up for those that made that commitment to Jesus today. We are celebrating with you because, man, we declare your sins are forgiven. You have come into the family of Christ. Therefore, now you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Come on. And now God is calling you. He's calling you. The great commission on your life, the great mandate on your life, the great purpose you have on you is there for you to commit. Come on, let's go. Let's go after what God has for us. I want to pray over our church family, man, just in the middle of this space, this miracle, that this start of a great season for this church. I want to pray over us as a church that we would be activated in our faith, 
that this week I know that God is going to use you in a mighty way. Change family. I'm telling you, everywhere you go, Holy Spirit's going to rock up and give you an opportunity to share the love of Christ. And I want to pray for boldness. I want to pray for more courageousness. I want to pray for a love to come into your heart, just like in Ephesians, how he said, the perfect love to be, to be grounded and rooted in love. Because why? Love casts out all fear. And when we have love in us, cast out all the fear of man, all the fear of what people think. Love drives this thing home. So I want to pray for us right now that God would activate us, that this week would be a week where we would see lives transformed. That as you step in, you step into community and the groups, you step into coming alive to your purpose, to setting captives free, you step into serving maybe in this church, the creative team, worship team, you want to get involved with admin, like whatever you want to do to get involved. I want to pray that God activates you, that this week you would take advantage of those opportunities. Hey, would you lift your hands and pray with me? Come on, let's pray together. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. Lord God, I pray for those that are hungry and ready to step in and commit to the call. Right now, I pray for a faith and a boldness to rise up in their spirits. God, raise them up to be the mighty men and women of God. Wake them up, Lord God, to the call in life. Wake them up to what you have called them to. You've not called them to sit. You've called them to go. So I pray that right now, God, their spirit would be awakened. Right now, their eyes would be open, that you would fill them with so much love, Father, that it would cast out all fear. And I thank you for the joy of the Lord that's filling their spirit right now. That God, all week long, they're going to be working in this joy. And the joy of the Lord is their strength. Come on, somebody. They're working in the strength and the peace of God. I thank you, God, that they're going to declare peace. They're going to see the sick ones healed when they pray for them. They're going to see those that are, are totally disturbed by demons. They're going to see them cast out in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for what you're raising up in this church. And I pray right now that you give them Holy Spirit firepower to work in all week long. In your name we pray this boldly.